So the first one, you are supposed to first fill it here. That is two to one. When they ask you two to two, even this one, you cannot put it. I always intend to tell that you first use this line first, then this one later. So you put X here, then another one here. Those are two, two to two. Then when the third one comes, you put it here. When the fourth one comes, you put it there. Now, when it comes to the other ones, you can start from anywhere. Here, 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 and then here. That one does not matter. But if they say two to two, two to two is better drawn like this. The first two, and then the next two, like that. That's two to two. Okay? Is that one clear? Yes. So what is hard in doing this work? Is there anything hard? Oh, is there any question? So far, up to where you have reached? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are those electrons put like in, in, in this? In the street, they don't they are not supposed to be put together like uh -huh. okay. that one we shall answer very soon. Very soon we shall answer. When we come to uh there is a, whatever in chemistry call the bonding, bonding. We shall come to discover why they are put like that. Such that if when you are writing chemical equations like sodium plus chlorine to get sodium chloride two two we shall know why those things are located like that an example sodium is two to eight to eight to one chlorine is two to eight two is it two to eight to seven yeah it is like that so this one we need this one very fast become steady stable compound or it gives us something called sodium chloride so this one will take away this one very fast to become eight because this one is far from the side. So we shall come to discover why they are put like that. Okay. But the main idea is because of bonding and reactions, chemical reactions. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any question? Now, if you look at aluminium here, yes. I have a question you to repeat. Who is that one? It is it Ruth? I have just joined. Yes. Ruth, you have just joined. Yes. Okay. So here we looked at uh, when we're ending this, we looked at some structure. Like, uh, let's take an example, two to five. Two to five is which element? Two to five is which element? No. Yes. Is it nitrogen? Yes. Nitrogen, isn't it? Now, when it comes to nitrogen, the first two will be filled just after the nucleus. We have two electrons outside. Now, when it comes to the other five, the other five, we start with the diagonals first. Then this is one, two, three, and then four. Now, the other, the other one remaining to make five, you can put it anywhere, as long as those ones are full. You can start by putting it here. So that we have one, two, three. Did you, do you see that this one gives us the, the, the what? The, how do you call it? In chemistry, it's called what? The valency. Valency of nitrogen. Nitrogen is in group five, and group five don't have true valence. It becomes eight minus five, which is three, isn't it? You get it? 
Yes? Yes. Mm. So this one shows that nitrogen has a valence three because of these three, three free elements there. It wants to attract other elements to come and join it here. Like an example, when it attracts an element like calcium, you form calcium nitride. So where the others come and fix themselves is in between these spaces to fill these two electrons so that they become full and form one compound that's united. Okay? Yeah. Mm. So you start by filling the first two, those ones opposite, then the others opposite. Then you fill one anywhere so that you remain with the other three free elements waiting for other elements to come and join them. Now let's look at the structure of oxygen. Oxygen. Oxygen is two to what? Oxygen is two, two, to, two. two to six. Two to six. Isn't it? Yes. Now when you come to the structure of oxygen, you first draw the two. This is one and the two. Then now you follow it by the other six. You start with this one, which is X and X. Then you go to the side, X and X. Then now you start from there. Where should you put the other two so that the other two remain on? This is one and two. How many have remained? Two, isn't two. it? So this two shows yeah. us the valency of oxygen. What's the valence of oxygen? Two. Minus. Because it is not a true valence, it becomes two minus and they are non-metal. Now, have you discovered where valence comes from? Yeah. The combining yeah. power of an element. That's what they do. Okay. So if I tell you to draw for me the structure of chlorine, chlorine is two to two to eight to seven, and you give me it is a valency. Can you? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, I want the answer from the electronic structure. I get to me the balance of chlorine. One. It is one, isn't it? One. Mm. Yes. yes. Ruth, what have you got? One. It is one. So simply by just looking at the electronic configuration of an element, you'll be in position to determine it is valency. Now, like this one, it is missing only one to be full, to become eight, isn't it? Yes. So that is the valence it has. Okay, so yes. that is the way you determine valency. Now, from today onwards, Z start mastering the first 20 elements of the periodic table. You must know their electronic structure, you must know that the electronic configuration and atomic number. Atomic number you just write from one to 20. From that, you will discover very many elements and how they are drawn. Have you seen the one of calcium? How they are? The two, the last yes. two on the outer shell. Have you seen how they have put them? Yes. One here, one here for easy bonding of an electron. Okay. Yes. Very good. Now, if substances have the same, there are some substances in chemistry that have the same atomic number. They have the same atomic number, but different different mass number mass number these elements that behave that way their name is called isotopes iso what isotopes 
instead of adding instead of adding uh, the two numbers maybe you have uh, you know inside the nucleus we have protons and neutrons isn't it yes. you say the mass number is got by adding protons and neutrons now for them instead of having they have the same protons because atomic number is the same as protons they have the same protons protons but different different neutrons so neutrons are the ones that differ from these elements now you find an element like sodium sodium it might be like this sodium 23 11 and then sodium uh 22 11 now you find that these are the same number the same atomic number but due to this due to this they have different protons different neutrons that's why if you add this plus this you get the uh, uh, what 30, 34 when you add this you get 30 33 33. Now, this one is the one that causes the difference. It is the difference between the mass numbers. Mass numbers are different. Now, the cause of this is the difference. So, when you are defining isotopes, you can say these are elements in the periodic table. These are elements that have the same atomic number but different mass number. Or oh, these are elements that have the same number of protons but different neutrons. Right. So, those are the two words we are going to use here. And the, the examples are here. Like hydrogen, hydrogen has three isotopes. We have hydrogen one, one, hydrogen two, one, and then hydrogen three, one. All these are isotopes of hydrogen. They have the same atomic number, one, one, atomic number is here. Everywhere you see one, 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 those are the same atomic number. But on top you see different numbers, one, two, three. Those are they. So they also exist. The most abundant one is one one. That's why we deal with only one one. But there is also this one and this one. This one is rare, but this one is there. It is so common. Then also you reach carbon. Carbon is here. C six twelve. C six thirteen. C six fourteen. Have you seen this? It is like uh, if they want to know that uh, maybe your blood functions, or, uh, something has stopped moving from your body, they inject you with one of these carbon, maybe carbon 14 or carbon this. So this one is the one that is used to study carbon dating or oh, the number of years a bone has finished in the world in down there. Uh, like if they want to know that you died long ago, 1900, I had this story teacher talking about 1900, about 15 what? So if they want to discover that you died long ago, this is what they use. They use carbon 14, 6. It is used for carbon dating to know the number of years you have finished down there. So all these are forms to which carbon exists on Earth. But the most one that people study is this. This one is called a trace element. Trace element. They can inject it somewhere and use a microscope or something to see where it has gone. And that one shows you that this substance is okay. Uh, that's what they do. Chlorine also has iso isotopes. 35, 17, 37, 17. So this is our, our most element. There are the isotopes. There are also others. But what is different is the mass number or the number of neutrons that atom. They will give you a table that has protons and neutrons. Then they will ask you very many questions about it. The one of the questions is identify which of them is an isotope. So you must be in position to tell us that isotopes, these are atoms of the same element, atoms of the same elements, hydrogen, 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 same element with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons, or they have different mass number, but the same atomic number. So when they ask you of isotopes, that's the way you define them. But isotope is the study of the existence of those elements. Existence of atoms with the same atomic number, but different mass number. That is isotope. Existence. 
if you see that word with py but if you see the word isotopes with the es these are elements the same elements same element with same number of protons or atomic number but different neutrons or mass number that is the way you, you derive that so at your own free time make sure you draw these structures anyway and don't even stop here make sure you draw all this to practice and make sure you are perfect with them then isotopes you have talked about them uh, okay so from there up to where you have reached can i hear a question before i jump over to this interesting topic here down because this is where we are going to study the first 20 elements how where they are placed and why are these numbers in roman numerals and why these were numbers okay can i hear questions is there anything burning in the heart that you want to be discovered so there is no element with the same atomic number and the same mass number it's not possible right it is not possible okay. if it is the same number then it's the same element wait it you find maybe it is a mix somewhere you want to know which one is this you pick this you pick the other and then you see what they have if they have the same uh the same atomic number same mass number then it's the same element okay yes but if the the atomic number is the same but the mass number is different then that is an isotope it is just like a photocopy of the other okay. mm -hmm. ruth where is the question i don't have a question you have understood how to come up with these things i did not understand what okay. isotopy was trying to mean Isotope comes from isotope. Yes. Mm. Isotope is the existence of that element with the same uh, with the same atomic number but different mass number. But isotopes, these are the elements. They are the elements with the same mass number, and it's like telling you uh, which word can I use? Isotope, let me based on that. Isotope and isotopes. Isotope deals with the study of that element, maybe like that. Then isotopes is the same element you are studying. You get it? Yes. Mm. Isotope is the existence of that element with the same atomic number but different mass number. Or oh, isotopes are elements it is no longer the existence when you talk of isotopes we know that now they exist so now you defined in terms of saying it is these are the elements with the same they can be two or three with the same to make an hour but different mass number elizabeth elise Yes. Uh -huh. Questions? I don't have any. Okay. Uh, who is the hope? Any question? There is no question. So make sure you benefit from this program because there's no way you're going to get this. When school starts, you are going back to the other normal way of doing things. And by that level, we expect you to be the main people discussing this work with other students, okay? Sit them in the group, tell them how to come up with equations as you write more. So the more you're exposed to this, 
the more you will be excellent in chemistry. When you sit down with them, chemistry will sit on you. This is like mathematics. Mathematics, you must practice it daily. Any science, you must practice it daily. And at the end of this, you must be pushing to tell people that this is a right chemical for the right duty. So when you go to A level, you'll not find problems anymore. When you go to senior four, you'll just be writing. Failure to understand this at this level, then things are going to be tricky and hard for us. So make sure you read. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm. The more you read, the more you get. So these books are always like that. And uh, I'm going to add this book there. I've talked about it, but uh, this time I have to add it. Now, I want to skip this word relative atomic mass. We shall meet it somewhere in front. But for now, allow me to skip it if we are to go on. There is this word called the periodic table. We looked at it first and it came even in the, in the work we had at first. We have known the electronic configuration, we have known the electronic structure. Where they come from, they have told us the periodic table. What does the periodic table mean to us? Elizabeth, your reading is from here up to this word where I put that mark. That's why you're supposed to read and stop. Uh -huh. The periodic table. Is Elizabeth there? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, where are you? Okay, Ruth, read for us that part. The periodic table is the arrangement of elements in order mm -hmm. of increasing atomic masses. Very good. The arrangement of elements in increasing, increasing atomic, atomic what? Masses. So this is a, a short form of writing increasing. If you want to increase, you just say increase. Decrease is written like this, okay? So, so increasing atomic masses. We looked at atomic mass as a, an addition of protons and neutrons, isn't it? Yes. Uh -huh. So that is the order of elements. As long as the atomic mass is increasing, then that element is in the periodic table. Two, from here up to where I'm stopping here. Ruth, is Elizabeth, are you now there? Okay, Sean, we we'll go on. The periodic table mm. is made up of rows and columns. Mm. The horizontal rows are called periodics mm -hmm. and the assigned number according to the number of, ele of electron shells energy Mm. levels that is filled by electrons electrons the most important part is the periodic table is made up of rows and columns what is a row what is a column where is the row where is the column huh? A row is the one horizontal something. Horizontal. A row is vertical. Do they, do they teach matrices in, in the P7? 
Uh, so where is the indication of a row? A row is like this or like this? Like that. This is a row. No, the uh, other one. This one is a row. What yes. about a column? Huh? A column is this one. Mm -hmm. huh? ha. Yes. Okay, yes. let's decide from here. <laughs> they are saying the vertical columns, vertical columns are referred to as groups, vertical columns. So yes. where is the column? A column is this one. The second one. The second one. The second one. This is a column. Yes. This is a, a row. A row. So if you have numbers like this, A, B, C, D in mathematics, and you have maybe A, C, D, maybe X, W, Y, Z, when you're multiplying, they say a row, and a row by a column. So this is a row, okay? This is a column. So it is the same word. So this is a column, this is a row. Okay, so our rows are called what? So this is a row by column. Sorry, you're not seeing. Let me first decrease on this a little. Okay, so rows, they are telling us that here vertical columns are called groups, columns. Columns are called groups. And then rows are called eh? periodic. Periods. Not periodic, but they are called periods. Okay. So yes. here, this is the way the predictable looks like. It has rows and columns. In the rows, we have periods, then in the columns, we have groups. Now, groups are indicated by Roman numerals, these ones, by Roman numerals. Roman numerals. While these ones are indicated by full numbers. I don't know who invented those numbers because why one were brought by Romans. The numbers were brought by who? Who brought numbers? So <laughs> that's what they mean. So periods. The British. Uh, so periods. We have period one, two, three, full numbers. These ones have I one, I two, three, four, five, six, up to eight. So the other big periodic table we had last time, it was as big as that. But for us, we are responsible for only the first 20 elements and we draw them like this. This is our representation of our periodic table. We shall have this. The first one is high up here and then we shall separate it by My time is saying we have 10 minutes to go away, but I think they are less than 10. So this is the way you draw your periodic table in simple terms. Then you close here like this. Then now what follows here is this. Two. This is the fourth one yeah. and the fifth. So here we have our groups. We have group one, group two. In the middle here, we have uh, very many elements. I uh, will show you the other big one and give you the difference between that one and this one. We have three. Then we have four. This is a five. Then we have six, seven, and then eight. Okay. So here we have one, 
two, three, and four. Now, if you draw the other electronic structures, you will find out that anything that has one electron outside, one electron will always lie here. Okay? Then all those that had two electrons outside, all of them lie here. Start from two to two, two to eight to two, two to eight to eight to two, all of them lie here. Also, you find those ones with three electrons outside, two to three, two to eight to three, all of them will lie in that period, in that group. So meaning that the last number, last number in the electronic structure or electronic configuration gives us the group to which that thing belongs. The last number, if something is two to eight to eight to one, it belongs to group what? One. Group one. Then these ones, one, two, three, four, gives us the number of shells it has. So this number of shells give us the group, not even the group, the period to which it belongs. So this one is in the period four, which is somewhere, four shells actually. This is two, the first eight, second eight, and then one. This is where it falls. How are you? Okay. So this one gives us the period to which it belongs. It belongs to period one, two, three, four, period four, group what? Group one. Okay. So when you insert those things here, you say, so I don't know which term we are going to use to master those words. Have you already got one? The first 20 elements, the predictable. I told you since when we started these sessions of online teaching, that uh, for us, we shall first deal on the first 20 elements in the predictable. And that's where our main study is. Okay? All their reactions, how they behave, and we call it like that. So when you draw this, this is hydrogen. It has one electron outside, so it remains here. Lithium was three. It came to two to one. Have you seen where it is? The next one is sodium. Sodium is two to eight to eight to one. That one we have put there. This is the potassium. Potassium is two to eight to eight to eight to one. So you see when they go down, there's something that increases. And that's what we are going to study there. So look for the terms to cram the first 20 elements up to here. After that, you draw their electronic configuration. You draw their, you add their electronic structure. Draw the electronic structure and then electronic configuration. And then we have known where they come from. So next time when we meet, is it on Friday? We shall look at what that table is composed of. Where do you find the metals? nanometers and where do you find the things that don't react so in less than a minute is there a question so far we can ask mm -hmm. so this book you're going to send it in the whatsapp uh, I can send it on WhatsApp, else I can put it in the group on the school page. Which one is easier? Study materials. Study materials. You put it in the... Study material for senior one. Yes. Okay. I'm going to put it there. Okay? Yes. Okay. So if there is no question, let me allow you to rest. And then... We meet next time, but make sure you draw those tables. You draw these things, electronic structure from the first one up to the last one we have had. Okay. Yes. Good. The first twenty elements. Okay. I wish you the best of the day. Enjoy. Okay.
Volta.